In this video, you will learn about what is capacitive reactance and how you can calculate it. We'll be also using simple simulation for better clarity. So to get all these details, you need to watch the video. So let us start by understanding the resistance. Now we know that a resistance is a pretty simple device and what it does is it simply opposes the flow of current. Now this opposition is not affected by the magnitude of the current, whether it is a constant current or it's an alternating current, it really doesn't matter. What resistor is going to do, it's simply going to oppose the current flowing through it by dropping the voltage. Uh, which is proportional to the current flowing through it. And that is the reason why we also saw in the previous video, voltage and current in resistive circuit are perfectly in phase with each other. Now, what does that simply means? It, it takes us back to the Ohm's law. Now, what Ohm's law tells is that, so voltage is a directly proportional to the current provided your resistance is constant. If your resistance is not constant, then the condition is not true. But considering the resistance is constant, in that case, your voltage is directly proportional to the current. So what does this mean is, when current flowing through inductor is maximum, in that case, your voltage will also going to be maximum, right? Opposite is also true when current flowing through an in, uh, resistor is low or zero, in that case, the voltage across it will also be very, very low. So that is the reason why you will see voltage and current waveform in case of resistive circuit are perfectly in sync with each other. Let me also show you that by the simple simulation here. So here we have a simple AC circuit wherein we have connected a AC source and a resistor as a load. And you can see the waveform, waveform of it on top. Now let us see uh, this waveform in detail and I will tell you how the things are working here. So here you can see when the green waveform represents the current and the other one represents the voltage. So when current through resistor is maximum, right, uh, let me change the color here. So when current through the resistor is maximum, you will see voltage is also maximum, clear? When current drops to zero, the voltage is also dropping to zero, this position. And when current reach to its negative peak, the voltage also goes to its negative peak. That means the voltage waveform in a waveform is exactly following the current waveform. And we, we say this as voltage and current are exactly in phase with each other. Clear? Now this is important that you understand how voltage and current behave in resistive circuit so that you can able to differentiate between the capacitive circuit and the resistive circuit. So this is about the capacitive circuit. Now let us understand the capacitor. Now before we start with the capacitor, uh, if you're finding this video helpful and if you want me to continue, uh, you know, explaining the basics of electrical engineering, please comment yes in the uh, chat box down below. That will definitely help me to understand the requirements from your end. And if you're finding this content useful and really easy to understand, please do like and share the video that really helps the channel to grow further. And I really, really appreciate that. Now, let us talk about the capacitors. Now, capacitor, we know that they do not behave same as that of resistor, right? Their behavior is totally different. Now, in case of resistor, we know that they simply oppose the flow of current. In case of capacitor, capacitor is absolutely okay with current. So any amount of current you pass through it, whether it's alternating in nature or it's continuous, it really doesn't matter. Capacitor will allow that to flow through it. That is fine. Capacitor will also allow to flow, uh, you know, continuous voltage through it. So if you're passing five amp, five volt continuously through it, the capacitor is okay. Or even if you're passing 50 volts continuously, the capacitor is okay with it but definitely everything is not okay. So capacitor, what it says is, okay, I will allow your continuous voltage to pass through me, but I will not allow any change in that voltage. So if you're passing a changing voltage through me, I am going to oppose it. So for sure, 
the capacitor is going to oppose the AC voltage because AC we know it is alternating in nature and capacitor is going to oppose it. A capacitor says I will oppose it and I will try to maintain the voltage constant through me. And how, how is that possible? How capacitor can maintain the voltage uh, to the same level? Of course, by playing around the current. So if your voltage is changing, how you can control the voltage? Again, very simple Ohm's law by controlling the current right here. If you control the current, your voltage is also going to be controlled according to the Ohm's law. So to understand the example here, let's say uh, your voltage is now at peak and that is flowing through the capacitor. So we will say voltage is maximum in that capacitor. So in that case, what capacitor will do? Capacitor will try to oppose that change and it will try to bring back the voltage to its original position or to its previous position. And how is that possible? Simply capacitor, if it will drop the current that uh, across it and it will try to bring back the voltage to its previous position. So if you drop the current, your voltage is also going to be dropped as per the Ohm's law. The opposite, the opposite is also true. When voltage is zero, let's say this position on the waveform. So when voltage is zero, what capacitor will do? Capacitor will try to take the voltage to again its original position by uh, supplying more current in the circuit. So in that case, current becomes maximum. Let us understand that by, uh, you know, looking at simple simulation here. So here we have a simple capacitive circuit wherein we have an AC supply and a capacitor is connected across it. Now simply let me run the simulation and we will see the waveforms. So on top you can see the waveform of this circuit. Now let us analyze this waveform so that we will have better clarity about the positions of voltage and current in case of capacitive circuit. So let us. So the green waveform what you can see here is the voltage waveform and the other one is the current waveform. So when the voltage is maximum this position on the waveform you see current is zero. And why is that? Because capacitor is trying to drop the current so that your voltage will get back to its original position and that is the reason why the current is zero at this position. And the second position when voltage is zero you see the current is maximum and why is that because volt capacitor is trying to push more current so that the capacity uh, the voltage gets back to its previous position right clear that is the reason why your current is maximum and the voltage is zero and the same is the reason why the voltage and current are out of phase by 90 degree in case of capacitive circuit voltage has a head start than the current in case of capacitive circuit in case of an inductive circuit we saw in the previous video uh, current has a head start than the voltage and here in the capacitive circuit it is exactly opposite so this is how the capacitor opposes the change in voltage through it by dropping the current which is directly proportional to the rate of change of voltage let us see the proper statement for that so capacitor opposes the change in voltage by dropping or supplying current which is directly proportional to the rate of change of voltage. So what capacitor is doing? Capacitor is simply opposing the change in voltage. And how capacitor opposes that? By dropping or supplying current. Clear? And the current is directly proportional to the rate of change of voltage. So when your rate of change of voltage is higher, the current uh, supplied or dropped by the capacitor will also be higher and the opposite is also true. Now, this type of opposition that capacitor is offering is definitely very much different than what resistor offers, right? And definitely for that purpose, we need a separate or a dedicated name for this kind of opposition. And hence, we call it as a reactance. Okay, clear. Now, since this reactance is specifically offered by a capacitor, we call it as capacitive reactance, right? Makes sense. 
In the previous video, we saw that the reactance was offered by an inductor and hence the name was inductive reactance. Here it is offered by a capacitor and hence the name is capacitive reactance. Clear? It is very, very easy to understand. Now, reactance we know that it is denoted by letter X. Now, since it is offered by a capacitor at subscript, we write C. So, the denotion for capacitive reactance is XC. And this is also measured in ohms, just like resistance and inductive reactance, it is also measured in ohms. Now calculating the capacitive reactance is also very easy. The formula for is Xc is equals to 1 divided by 2 pi Fc. So F is nothing but the frequency and C is nothing but the capacitance of that capacitor. Now using this simple formula, you can calculate the in capacitive reactance offered by that particular capacitor and using that you can identify the current flowing through the circuit. Now uh, one major difference between inductive and capacitive is that in the inductive reactance case the inductive reactance is directly proportional to the frequency but here in case of capacitive reactance the frequency is inversely proportional to the capacitive reactance meaning that if your frequency increases the capacitive reactance will decrease and if your frequency decreases your capacitive reactance will increase right so this is how you can calculate the capacitive reactance using this simple formula now getting let's get back to our uh, uh, statement here what it says is the current that is being supplied or dropped by the capacitor depends upon the rate of change of voltage so let us check that using the simulation if uh, the statement is correct or not so here is the simple circuit uh, simple capacitive circuit we have what we are going to do is we are going to understand the current flowing through the capacitor now as per the information we have if the rate of change of voltage is increasing the current flowing through the capacitor should also increase now rate of change of current is what is nothing but the frequency that we will be having for this AC source. So initially the frequency is 500 Hertz. Now with this, what is the current flowing through the capacitor that we will check. So let me run the simulation here. So here you have to focus on the RMS value of the current. So uh, here you can see the RMS value is triple one milli ampere. Now what we will do, we will double the frequency. That means we are doubling the rate of change of voltage. Now, ideally, as per our information, the current through the capacitor should also double. So let us see if that happens. Now I have made the frequency as one kilohertz. So let us run this simulation and see if the value of current changes. So here you can see the RMS value of current has almost doubled. It is now 223 milliampere. So you have to here refer the RMS value. In AC, we always refer RMS value. Now, if you are interested in knowing what is RMS value, why we refer it in the AC, then I have a dedicated and a very easy to understand video on that. I'll provide link for that video down in the description. You can check that out video. You can check that video out after finishing this video. So with this simulation, it is also proved that with the uh, change in rate of, with the change in rate of change of voltage, the current supplied or dropped by the capacitor will also change clear this is really really easy to understand and very very interesting as well now let us quickly summarize the video so we saw that the capacitor opposes the change in voltage by dropping or supplying current which is directly proportional to the rate of change of voltage now since this opposition is specifically offered by a, a capacitor we call it as capacitive reactance it is represented by letter XC and measured in ohms. Okay. We can calculate it by using the formula XC is equal to 1 divided by 2 pi FC, where F is frequency and C is the capacitor of that capacitance. So I hope this video was helpful and you understood it. If it did, please do like the video and share it with your friend. That really helps the channel uh, to grow further and I really appreciate that. In the next video, we are going to talk about what is impedance. So if you don't want to miss any update, then do subscribe to the channel so that you will be notified every time I upload a new video.
So that's all for this video guys. I hope it was helpful. Thank you for watching and have a great day.